So MSI over here basically told me that this would be an all-white gaming PC and asked me to mention it. And then they then proceeded to send me a GPU that was metallic and silver. So it's not an all-white gaming PC. But it doesn't matter because at the end of the day, it's still going to be a sick 1440p gaming PC build that we are going to have a lot of fun with. Oh, and it's brought to you by MSI, so thanks to them. Starting off with the CPU, we have the i5 12600. Hey, now, the 12600K is a bit overkill for this rig. If you're just gaming, the 12400F is a great way to save a buck. But this CPU is definitely powerful and definitely awesome. I use it in my own daily driver and it's excellent for anyone editing, rendering, or even just flat out gaming. Now onto the motherboard. It's the MSI MAG B660M Wi-Fi. Now this is the DDR4 version because it's not worth it to go DDR5 in my opinion. It's just too prohibitively expensive and hard to get your hands on when it comes to DDR5 RAM. But no biggie, DDR4 is still great and as well as the fact that this motherboard is full of features from great VRMs to great VRM cooling to, to the fact that it has plenty of NVMe SSD slots. As for storage, we're going with a 1TB SSD also from MSI. What a surprise. This is their new Spatium M450 and it's a 1TB Gen 4 SSD. It's pretty fast, pretty respectable in terms of its performance. 1TB should be enough temporarily, but if you're downloading and installing a lot of games, you would want something bigger. 2TB, 3TB, 4TB. To keep your CPU cool, we're going with this, the MAG Core Liquid 240R V2. It's an all-white water cooler, which is gonna fit the color team perfectly, and I absolutely love how it's got this Iron Man inspired emblem for its water block, like a circle with the triangle in it. It's got the MSI logo, RGB, it looks really good. And 240mm AIO, which should keep our CPU pretty nice and cool, all while being reasonably quiet. Now, as for the part you've all been waiting for, what GPU are we using? Well, it's the RTX 3080 with the Supreme X cooler from MSI. And this cooler is absolutely gorgeous. We got like a brushed metal finish on the back, like a nice logo that's kind of embossed into the back plate. It's gorgeous. It's very big and thick, but it is just stunning to look at with that silver metallic color theme and finish. It's just for a 1440p gaming rig, this is definitely more than enough. In fact, you could get away with like a 3070. But since we're going with a really powerful MSI rig here, we have to use an RTX 3080. And this is absolutely excellent. Not a white GPU, but that silver metallic color scheme is going to fit perfectly with the rest of this PC. And oh my god, it's just stunning to look at. As for power supply, it's got to be all white as well. So we got an MSI power supply. They make power supplies, I didn't know that. It's a MAG A750 GF. White. It's a 750 watt power supply that we got here, but if you're building this rig step by step and following along, please get at least the 850 watt version of this power supply because 750 watts is not enough. 850 watts is kind of the bare minimum if you're building a rig with an RTX 3080 and i5 12600K. You don't want to be operating your power supply at its limits. For short term use, for demonstration purposes here, it's going to be perfectly fine to use 750 watts, but for long term usage, 850 is where you need it. But the good thing about this power supply is that it's all white. Not only is the power supply all white, the cables are all white, which is awesome. They are these beautiful cables that come with the power supply. And finally, the case is going to be a Gangnir 110R in white. It's an MATX case that, guess who makes? MSI! And it's also a very nice case. See how it goes. Okay, so with a PC build, you want to start off by installing the CPU pretty much always. And to do that, you need to take out your motherboard first and foremost. So inside the motherboard box, you'll get a bunch of things. Obviously, you get your motherboard wrapped up in a nice anti-static bag. So the anti-static bag is to protect it from any sort of static electricity shocks from hurting the circuit board or anything. <laughs> I had a heart attack for a moment. I saw AMD on the back of the motherboard. I was like, wait, did they send me the wrong one? But no, it's AMD Crossfire support. So the motherboard comes in an anti-static bag and for some reason, MSI's bags are super duper tight, which is not really a big deal, but it's it's kind of funny because uh, this one has a built-in IO shield, as you can see, which is super convenient, which means you don't have to install your own IO shield, but you don't really want to be putting your motherboard on top of the anti-static bag. Instead, just use the cardboard box that your motherboard came in as a nice, simple, safe test bench to test your parts and all that. Now, I'm going to take a Big risk and I'm just gonna immediately build the PC and not test the parts outside of the PC because I am an absolute gambler but if you were building this at home it's a good idea to install all the parts first and make sure everything is working outside of the case before going through the hassle of installing the case and then finding out things aren't working. How do you install a CPU? Take out your CPU from the CPU box. Do not hold your CPU on the sides, don't let your fingers touch the bottom. The contact pads there are very fragile. And on top of that, you don't want your finger oils getting on there, maybe shorting something, or maybe just ruining the contact for sure. You also don't really want to touch the top because you want to make sure it's clean so that your CPU has a good contact with the water cooler later on. Now to install your CPU is real simple. I think you've seen a million tutorials of these by now. You 
press down on the lever on the side, you move it to the side and you lift it up, you let it pop up and then you lift up the little cover. You don't need to remove the plastic cover, it pops off by itself. Then after which, you line up the two notches on the CPU with the two notches on the CPU socket. Only goes in one way, so if it doesn't fall in perfectly into place, don't force it. You probably put it in the wrong orientation. Be gentle, be careful. The pins on the motherboard here are extremely fragile. You want to gently place your CPU into the CPU socket and not drop it in. If you want to do the proper Linus Tech Tips way, he always gives it a little wriggle, but you, you don't need to. Just make sure it's in there properly, securely. When a CPU is installed properly in the right orientation, it's going to go into the hole like a fish into water. The next part of building a PC is installing the RAM. This part is super easy, super satisfying. The only thing you have to look out for is which slot to use. Thankfully on this motherboard it's already labeled. You have to use the second leftmost slot as well as the rightmost slot for your first two sticks of RAM. So we're just gonna slot it in like so. Pull back the tab, align the notch and then press. After that, while we have easy access to the motherboard, we are going to be installing the PCIe NVMe SSD. So the Spatium 1TB drive probably shouldn't be so aggressive with it. Okay, so we're gonna be using this first slot right here to install the SSD. So we have to remove these two screws. After you remove those two screws, remove the heat sink that is covering the SSD slot and then take your SSD. Just align the notch on your SSD with the notch in your SSD slot. Slide it in at an angle and then press it down. After the SSD is slot in, it reinstalls the heatsink. So what's interesting about the heatsink design of this motherboard is that it's also designed to hold the SSD in place, which is probably why this MSI SSD didn't come with a screw included. This is the installed. That's literally it. No cables, no data cables. Oh, I love M.2. Okay, let's open up this. So here we got the case, Gangneon 110R. Okay. Oh. It's actually really nice, all white for one. It's got 320 millimeter fans in the front and 120 millimeter in the back. To start building your PC in your case and start prepping the case, you need to first open up the case. Up the case, first remove these two thumb screws on the back right here. So in the case of this case, the tempered glass panel slides back or slides out or just comes out like that. After that, you want to remove the rear side panels by removing the other two thumb screws. It's on really tight, not weak, it's just really tight. Why is it so tight? It's so tight, dude. <laughs> After you remove the rather tight thumb screws, you can then remove the back panel, which is this piece of metal, and then put it somewhere safe. Don't put it on your tempered glass, it's gonna scratch. Now, the reason I'm opening my back panel here is because I want to look for my case hardware, which is at this right here as well as the manual. You get a bunch of paperwork. I want to see what the paperwork is like. Shout out for MSI. Review, reward, win. So as you can see, attached to this hard drive tray right here, we got our bag of case hardware, which is the bag of screws we're going to use to install everything we need in this case, as well as some adapters for RGB and fan splitters and some cable ties for managing your cables, which is really nice. We can now install our motherboard, which is the next step. Your motherboard. This one right here with all this stuff at installed into it, lining it up with the IO shield area in the back because the IO shield is built in, remember? It's really conveniently built in. Line it up and sliding it in. Perfect. The beauty of modern day PC cases is that the standoffs are already pre-installed. Uh, you, so you don't have to worry about installing standoffs, which is really nice. So unfortunately, while the standoffs are pre-installed, it's not all correct. So in this case, the motherboard needs a standoff here. So we need to move this standoff here to here because they didn't include any extra standoffs in the box. So we have to unscrew it, which, which I had to use a pair of um, pliers to do, which actually scraped the paint. So if you see that scarf paint, it's not MSI's fault. It's my fault for being so clumsy. So now that we've moved the standoff into the right place, we can actually slide the motherboard in. Now that we have all the standoffs in the right places and the motherboard is now in the right place, we take our screw, which looks like this. Screw our motherboard in. It's time to start installing things since the motherboard is here and nothing else big and bulky is in the way. So what I like to do here is start doing a bit of cable management and start doing all the installations before like your CPU cooler goes in, before your GPU goes in, before your power supply goes in, which takes up a lot of space and makes everything really crowded and cramped. Let's get to it. So first and foremost, we're gonna install the rear fan into this fan port right here. And because I've untied the pre-coiled cable, I'm able to hide the cable better, almost in the heat sink right here, so it looks a lot cleaner. 
So we tuck that cable away so it's hidden. Okay, so now we're gonna be plugging in the fans first before everything else kind of clogs up the case. Thankfully though, on the back here, we have kind of like a nice little RGB hub, so you don't have to manage the RGB cables yourself. It's, the case comes with a set of CPU fan splitters so that you can have multiple fans plugged into one plug and have enough plugs to go around. So it's very convenient that it's a one into three fan splitter. So we put it into this plug here. It's pump fan. It's technically for pumps, but I'm just gonna use it for a fan because if it doesn't work, we'll fix it later. But yep, we plug in the splitter, push it out into the back. As you can see, it's now dangled out. And then we just plug the three fans into the fan splitter. To keep things as neat as possible, we're just going to use these very nicely included Velcro straps to just hold it in place so they don't flop around too much. Since we have nothing in the case yet, nothing to clog up the space, we're also going to install the front panel connectors to just take this opportunity to get that out of the way. So these front panel connectors are all here and they're all ready to be plugged in into the motherboard and they all have the kind of the right full places so now this is where you need your motherboard manual because you need to know where to plug in each cable especially if you are a new builder to this but even the most advanced of builders needs to know where the front panel connectors go put it on the front put it on the first page msi trust me people will thank you put, put it here put it, you can put another copy here but put put one here follow the manual and take our front panel connectors that look like this and put them into the right holes right pins whatever they're called for the power switch and research switch, you don't have to worry about polarity. That is to say, you don't have to worry about which pin is plus, which pin is minus. But if you're trying to install the LED front panel connectors, you need to worry about which plus and which is minus. Thankfully, this PC does not have a HDD LED because we recognize that there's no such thing as HDDs in this world anymore unless you're a server. Okay, so once we've installed it, it kind of just goes into this hole neatly. Actually, I think I want it here. I want it going through there. Feel free to move things around if you think it'll look neater, by the way. Just Once the front panel connectors are in, we can do the more easier connectors like a USB and HD audio. So, so this is USB-C and this is HD audio and this is USB 3.0. They all have plugs that look like them on the motherboard and they're often labeled as such. Uh, but if you're worried about which plug is which, you can always check the manual. In this case, for this motherboard, <sighs> USB 3.0 and USB-C are over here, so we're going to route the cable up there and plug it in. Be careful not to break the pin on the USB 3 connector because that does happen often. I've done it before and it's very annoying because now I have a, I will have like a dead USB 3 port on my PC. USB-C goes in like so, super duper easy. And then HD audio, if I'm not wrong, is down here at J audio, J out in the bottom corner. Now HD audio has one of the missing pin in the top row, so we can only go in one ray. So if it's not going in smoothly, do check the orientation don't force it in and ban a pin because if you ban a pin you can break it permanently and then your headphone jack on your PC will be as non-existent as a headphone jack on an iPhone. Now that the front panel connectors and front connectors all have been installed in very neat and fashionable order, we're going to proceed on to the next step which is to install... Look at that. It's actually so pretty. Oh, don't you love the smell of chemicals on the brand new whitely painted power supply. And then we've got a nice bag of cables. Will you marry me? Okay. Let's put in that power supply now. Nice and white. Not that black power supplies are bad. <laughs> it's uh, MSI. Look at that. That's so nice. It's so pretty. Okay, so to install your power supply, you need this little bag of screws from your case screws. They're the thicker, chunkier ones. If I'm not wrong, power supplies often also come with screws. It does. It dropped on the floor, but whatever. So you can use either one. Screws are cheap, so everyone includes them. So generally, when installing the power supply into the system, before that, what you should do is install the cables that you need. Now, because this is a modular power supply, none of the cables come pre-installed. You have to install them yourself, but it does give you the freedom to choose what cables you want to use and also minimize cable clutter by just eliminating cables that you're not using. So we're going to be using the 24 pin power cable because this is required for powering up your motherboard. All labeled very clearly. It's written on the plug itself like what it is. And the side of the power supply cable that has the name and the label of what it is on it goes to the part itself. So if it's labeled CPU, the CPU end is the one that has the label on it. It's pretty easy to understand. And the power supply itself has a lot of neat labeling so you know where to plug each cable into. So for this, we're going to need a few cables. We're going to need two PCIe cables, two CPU power cables, the motherboard cable, as well as a SATA power cable. I would prefer not to use a SATA power cable, but unfortunately, the RGB LED hub for the RGB fans that the case does come with is powered via SATA. So that means we have to use SATA power for it, which is unfortunately just another cable that we have to manage and deal with. Thankfully though, these are all flat, and very gorgeous white cables. They're not braided, unfortunately, but I think they look absolutely excellent. We, once we install that, we can then install the power supply really, really 
really quickly. As for how we're going to install the power supply, we're going to go fan side down because, well, there is ventilation on the bottom with a nice tilted air intake or the top of where the power supply is supposed to go has zero ventilation. No holes, nothing. No hole. Basically, we're going to give the power supply as much air as it can to breathe its own little kind of air circulation there. Because remember, we're trying to run an RTX 3080 on a 750 watt power supply and even though it's a short term rig that is only temporary, I still want to keep my power supply as cool as possible if we're going to be stressing it. Try not to let your cables fall out while you're installing the power supply because you don't want to have to pull everything out just to install them again. Uh, that will be extremely painful. While we're on the back of the case here, we're going to be managing the cables by putting them into the right grommets where they're going to be going. So the 24 pin power I know is here, the plug on the motherboard. So we're putting it through this rubber grommet like so. Super easy, super simple. We could do it more neatly, but this is the back of the case where nobody can see. So I'm going to destine it to a life of messiness. Next up, I'm going to install the SATA power. Now, we don't have any SSDs or hard drives in here, so I'm going to cable tie this cable down as much as possible to keep it as uh, compact and out of the way. But we need to plug this into the LED hub over here so that all these LEDs, which are stuck down by tape thankfully, have power, which is important. Next up, we have our CPU power cables. These are very simple. We know where they go and where they go is up top into the top corner. We know that the CPU power connectors are in the top here, so we're just going to stick it up there and if they're kind of hooked onto something else, we just rearrange it so it has minimal interference with other cables. And finally, the GPU power. It can't fit in the case because the fan is here. So we're going to remove the fan and we're going to figure it out. But the problem is it's so big and all over the place, I'm not too sure where it's going to end up. So we're going to install the rest of the cables, plug them in, tighten them down. Then we're going to install the GPU, then install the GPU power cable so that we don't have to kind of like approximate, which often ends up being inaccurate, where the GPU is going to go. So CPU power cables go into the CPU plugs in the top left here. They only go in one way, there's a clip on top. Very easy to understand, very easy to figure out. Power for a B-series motherboard indicates how power hungry these uh, Intel chips are. 24 pin power is over here and it goes into this big chunky 24 pins. That's actually pretty much all the power that we have to install. So now that we've done that, we can then come back to the back. Ah. Don't do that. Tighten all the cables so it's neater in the back. This is not the neatest cable management job ever. It's going to have to do due to time constraints. Now, at this point, I'm just going to reuse these twist ties that came with the damn cables, came around the damn cables because I prefer I prefer twist ties over those cable ties because cable ties are non-reusable. You kind of have to cut them once you're done. And also twist ties, these are white, which kind of they fit the rig a bit more. Weirdly enough, well, flat cables look really nice. They're not actually that great for uh, cable management because if they're flat, it's, it's, it's clean and saves a lot of space, but if they stand up straight, they just fill up the place so much. Okay, whatever. It looks pretty decent. Pretty happy with the job. It's not great. It's good enough. 3.6 Rongen. Not good, not terrible. Now let's install the GPU, which is the part I'm sure a lot of you have been waiting for. And for that, I need to redo my hair because it's sagging now. First off, you need to remove the GPU uh, covers. So how do you do that? You need to remove this shroud here, then remove these two covers. Now, not all cases have shrouds like this. In this particular case, it does. So that's something that we have to deal with. One thing about this case is that screws are on really tight. So make sure you have a good chunky screwdriver to remove the screws here. So once the screws are out, remove the slot covers. You can keep them or you can throw them away. You should keep them just in case you want to sell the case or remove the case or whatever. Wow, MSI has just sent me two incompatible. Oh no. That's great. And turns out, well, this GPU is so damn fat and thick that it can't fit in the case. Number one, we can't install our fan filter anymore which is unfortunate. And number two, we can install the more important thing than the fan filter, the graphics processing unit, also known as Scalper's favorite thing on earth. There you go, goes in like so. And finally, only now can we install our graphics card. Now, if you're worried about GPU sag, there is a GPU support bracket that actually comes inside the box that you can use. But all we're gonna now is finally go back to the power cable, the GPU power cables we talked about just now, and install that there. You might be like, oh, this is so messy down here. Guess what? No one's gonna see it. So now that the cables are through, push it in until you hear like a click. Though sometimes the click is very soft, so long as it's tight, it'll be fine. Okay, so to make this look a little bit neater, I am going to tie this together so they don't like spin around. Wrap it, hide it behind. Now that we have that installed, 
we have the final step. You think it's over? No. When is it so easy? When is life so easy? Which is the all-in-one water cooler. The reason I have left this to last is because all-in-one water coolers are number one, finicky to install, and number two, they're very big and bulky. They take up a lot of space, so you don't really want to be kind of filling it up. So uh, with that, in the meantime, while you're trying to manage all that. Also, it's very heavy, so if you need to move the case around, you leave your AIO to the last. So now we're going to install the all-in-one water cooler, which is the last part of the build because it kind of gets in the way of everything else. So I like to keep it to the last. This is your best friend, the manual. Hmm. 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 Okay, actually it's not that hard. Okay, so what do you need to install this all-in-one water cooler? Well, number one, you need this bag of black screws because these black screws are for installing your fans to the radiator, your radiator to the case. And you generally will use the long screws to install all at once. And then what you also need is you need this from the LGA 1700 specific bag as well as this bag of black, long, weird-looking screw standoff thingies. And also, you're going to need this little metal bracket from the general, general mounting hardware tools. That's pretty much it. Also, you're going to need a thermal compound that they give you, which is a very tiny, cute little tube. So little. Uh, I'm sure it has a great personality or maybe the day is a bit cold, but let's, let's focus on installing the water cooler right now. So let's start off by preparing the, all, the water block for mounting. So I'm going to remove the plastic. Some people forget to remove the plastic and it just like ruins their rig. They're like, why does it smell like melted plastic? Well, that's because you forgot to remove it and now you just melted the damn plastic. Uh, after that, take your metal bracket. You see this janky metal bracket? In some, there you go. So it slides on, snaps in place, very nice. Ooh, satisfying. Okay, so that is our water block. Then next up, we need to go to the back of our motherboard tray, as you can see here. Take your back plate. Right, there's two pieces of 3M tape on here. Right. So we're going to take these double-sided tape. Very kind of MSI to include this double-sided tape, because if not, you have to like hold it and fin fin jangle it, which is pretty troublesome. Peel the double-sided tape like a nice fruit. Put it on the back, hold it for a couple seconds, and it should stick in place. Good job, 3M. After you've done that, we are installed the radiator and fans first, rather than installing the water block first because it's very troublesome. Now, there's here we have another issue of not having enough fan ports because we have one fan port and two fan port and then like a cis fan port down below, all of which we, we can't reach. So we've rerouted the fan cable. So now we have two, ow, ow, we have two fan ports in the top right here because we rerouted that fan cable to this one down below. See this fan cable? So once we've done that, we've got our all-in-one water cooler. Because we already have three intakes on the front and we have one exhaust only on the back, I'm going to have this be two exhausts uh, as well. How do you know the direction of where the fan is blowing? Well, in this case, it's blowing this way with this kind of like frame structure being where the air is leaving. Generally, that tends to be the case where there's like the MSI sticker or the brand sticker. That's where the fan is leaving with the logo on the other side. But you can tell from the shape of the blades, you can compare it with your freaking normal standing fan and determine it's not very hard to figure out. Or you can spin it and see where the air goes and if the air goes this way, then it's going that way. So we're going to have it exhaust, so we're going to have it suck air out this way. So these are static pressure fans, which are good. And thankfully, this case is pretty wide, so there should be plenty of clearance for us to put that in there. No biggie, no issue at all. As with any good PC build, we got to have some uh, good foresight. So we need to plan out exactly where the water block, where the fans, and also where the cables, very importantly, are going to go. As you can see on the radiator, there are some cable management channels for the cables to come out. So plan according to that and uh, determine how it's going to be laid out. So this is going to be here, and I don't want to block the logo, so I want the cooler to be like this, right? Okay, so you see it lining up the holes? So what you want now is you want to take these long screws. So that's the first screw in. Line it up! So you need these long screws, you just need to line it up with the fan and the radiator, hold it in place and then you need to screw it in into the radiator to hold both the radiator and the fan up. Really be careful not to screw the screw into the radiator because you're going to puncture the radiator if you do that. Uh, you could. Okay, so now all these all-in-one water cooler cables are like hanging out. We can actually just kind of try reach our fingers behind and then pull them out through the hole so that we can manage them, plug them into the right spots. And so basically, RGB connectors can daisy chain each other. So in this case, we are connecting all the RGB connectors to each other. Then one female end goes into this pin here, which is a RGB standard pin. So we've installed the radiator now. And as planned, we had all the cables coming out the back. So then we can put it through these holes to have them all managed and dealt with here. Now, there is unfortunately a problem because, well, there are more fans than there are fan ports on the motherboard. So we have a total of six fans in the system, not including the GPU fan, and then we have a pump fan 
header. So there's a lot of things to plug into. Thankfully, the all-in-one water cooler comes with a fan splitter as well. So we can just plug that in into the fan port. We can plug our pump fan header into the pump fan port, which we had vacated earlier. So that, that, that goes in there. So now that that is done, we can spend some time to organize and sort this out to make it a little bit neater by unplugging, replugging things and tying things down and such and whatnot. Using twist ties as well as the included cable ties, all of it can be used to manage cable. So the final few steps is to do something that you should have done earlier. Number one, we're going to install these uh, standoff screw thingies. The short side goes down first, right there. Try not to scrap stuff. That goes down there. We're almost there, can you taste it? You can see we've got those four screws in there, which will then be our guiding rails. So we're going to take our syringe of thermal compound. There's a thin line is enough. That's quite a lot of thermal compound. And finally, we take this bag of uh, hardware and we screw it down. I forgot that cable, that's great. We'll push it into the other side and deal with that later. Show you the best cable management trick uh, in the world. And that is to see no evil, feel, hear no evil, feel no evil, there's no evil. All right, front's in, go. Put the thumb screw in to hold it in place. Am I excited? It looks pretty decent, I would say. It's not the neatest thing ever. Could I done it better? I think I could. I probably want to tidy that up a little bit. But, uh, looks good. No jinx, no curse. That's that's how good of a builder I am. Bob the Builder, can we build it? Yes, we can. Yes, we can. Look at that, in its RGB glory with the RGB control. There's a little button on the case here that controls RGB. That's the RGB hub that we plugged into just now. So we can quickly swap between all these modes, which is awesome. So how do you install Windows? Download the Windows installation media from Microsoft, their website. Install it onto a USB stick. You have to have an empty USB stick for this. At least four gigs is enough. No need more than that. Plug it into your computer and this screen will appear. And it just says install now. Follow the instructions real quick. You, you're in Windows. That's it. Literally, that's it. So, here are the parts that I decided to go with for the rest of the setup. I'm not going to talk about a PC because it's already done and dusted and I think it's gorgeous and wonderful and excellent and beautiful. But yeah, the rest of the setup. The monitor, we had to go MSI and it's just the MAG 274Q RF and it is a wonderful, wonderful display. This is the QD model, so it's more expensive than the one that I reviewed a couple of months ago. But the difference between this and that is that I think it has less brightness but a lot more saturation from its quantum dot layer. It's kind of like a subjective thing. I think this looks great. It's it's saturated, it's contrasty, it's punchy, it's a great, enjoyable time if you're trying to have a very immersive, enjoyable gaming experience. Wonderful viewing experience, 165 hertz, one milliseconds response time, excellent option. Now as for the keyboard, mice and headphones, you can actually go with MSI because they do have very gamer focused options. If you're wondering why there's some like streaming equipment lying on a table and stuff, that is because I plan to turn this setup into a full on streaming setup in a week or so. So make sure you subscribe for that video coming really, really soon. It's going to be a great, excellent video to watch, so do stay tuned. And I think with that, I'm just going to end this video off here. I absolutely enjoyed this setup, I'm still enjoying it, and I played a bunch of games already on it. I don't get to keep it, unfortunately. I'm going to enjoy it while it's still with me. Thank you so much to MSI for making all this possible. Big thank you to them, and if you're building your next gaming PC, your next productivity PC, your work from home setup, you're looking for a monitor, a, a case, a PC build, a keyboard mice, whatever, Go check out MSI, they make more than just motherboards, they make more than just GPU boards. They do everything under the sun and they do it really quite done well. So, and I will see you in the next video. I hope you guys appreciate the effort and the quality that went into this. It was a very, very difficult one to make. See you guys, goodbye.